So we're going to look at 22A, which is the study of motion. And we're going to look at um, instantaneous changes in motion. So when we have a particle moving along a straight line, we can have the position of the particle xt. So the position refers to the particle's distance from a reference point, usually the origin. If the particle is right of the origin or above the origin, then the position is normally positive. So if we have, say, position given by xt equals 3, that means the particle is 3 units right or above if our particle is moving up and down. If the particle is left or below the origin, its position is negative. So if someone says um, the position is minus 3, this means that the particle's position is 3 units to the left or down or in the negative direction of our reference point. Instantaneous velocity is given by the derivative of position. So this can tell us when a particle is at rest momentarily or a particle is changing direction at a particular moment in time. Those two things will happen if velocity is zero. Instantaneous velocity is the rate of change of position with respect to time at a particular moment. Now, velocity can be positive or negative. If velocity is greater than zero, this tells us that the particle is moving towards the right or in a right or up direction. If velocity is less than zero, then your particle is moving to the negative direction. So depending on which way the particle moving, it could be to the left or downwards. If velocity is zero, this is when the particle is momentarily at rest or it's changing direction. Once we have position and velocity, we sometimes need to find instantaneous acceleration. Instantaneous acceleration tells us how a particle's velocity is changing, usually due to a force such as gravity or a push and pull motion acting on the object. This can tell us if the particle is speeding up or slowing down. Now acceleration is the derivative of velocity, or you can think of it as the double derivative of the position of the particle. Now we combine information from velocity and acceleration about whether the particle is speeding up or slowing down and which direction the particle is moving in. So if both velocity and acceleration are greater than zero, this means that the particle is moving towards the right and because both of these things are positive, the particle will be speeding up. If velocity is less than zero and acceleration is less than zero, because both of these are negative, again, the particle will be speeding up and it will be moving in the negative direction, whether that's left or downward. Velocity and acceleration have different signs. When one is positive and one is negative, we'll see that the particle will be slowing down. So for instance, if velocity is positive and acceleration is negative, the particle is slowing down, and because velocity is greater than zero, the particle is moving towards the right. If I swap it and velocity is less than zero and acceleration is greater than zero, again the particle will be slowing down, but this time it's going to be moving towards the left or the negative direction. So also, if acceleration is equal to zero, that means velocity is constant. So your particle is moving at a constant speed and in the same direction. Let's get into an example. So we have A, B, C, D, E and F as parts of this question. A particle moves in a straight line so that its position x centimetres relative to a fixed point O at time t seconds is given by x equals t squared minus 7t plus 6, where t is between 0 and 4 seconds. Our first question says find its initial position, velocity and acceleration and describe its motion at this time. So before we begin, I'd just like to write out what x is 
and then find velocity and acceleration in terms of their formulas. So we have position. If we differentiate, we'll get velocity. So we'll get 2t minus 7 is velocity. And if we differentiate this again, we will get acceleration. And that will just be a constant because when we differentiate 2t, we just get 2. And when we differentiate minus 7, we get 0. To find its initial position, velocity, and acceleration, that means time is equal to 0. So if we substitute 0 into x, into v, and into a, we should get its position, velocity, and acceleration at this time. The position will just be 6 in a positive direction. The initial velocity, okay, this time put a 0 where you see t into 2t minus 7, and we'll just get the initial velocity is negative 7. This means that our particle is moving towards the left or the negative direction. Finally, the initial acceleration, again, let t equal 0 into the equation for acceleration. Notice acceleration is just the constant 2, so this will be 2 centimetres per second squared. This means that the force being applied to the object is constant at t equals 0. We can see because velocity is negative and acceleration is positive, the object will be moving to the left and it will also be slowing down. Moving on to part B, when does the particle's velocity equal 0? And what is the position and acceleration at these times? So we need to solve when velocity is equal to zero. We know velocity is 2t minus 7. So when that equals zero, we get 2 equals 7 over 2 or 3.5 seconds. So simply substitute t equals 7 over 2 or 3.5 into our equation for x to find position. The position of the particle after 3.5 seconds. is minus 6.25 centimetres or minus 25 on 4 centimetres. Again, because acceleration is just a constant, even at time is 3.5 seconds, acceleration will, two, will still simply be 2 centimetres per second squared. So at this time of 3.5 seconds, this means my particle is changing the direction. And the reason that I know it's changing direction and not just kind of at rest here is because if we look at our initial equation, it's a quadratic, which means there's a turning point here. So our particle will turn around once, and that is when our velocity is equal to zero. Part C says, where is the particle after 4 seconds? So if we just sub in 4 into our x equation, this means our particle is 6 units in the negative direction from the origin after 4 seconds. Now I've just summarised what we know at the top in order to help us draw our diagram for part D. So I'm going to assume the particle is moving either to the left or to the right. You can draw it up or down as well, it doesn't really matter. So we know at time equals zero, the particle is six centimetres to the right. It is moving in the towards the negative direction and its acceleration is constant. We know that the particle will continue in this direction until its velocity is zero at t equals 3.5 seconds. Here, the particle's position is minus 6.25 or 6.25 centimetres to the left of the origin. So we can draw a line connecting x equals 6 at time zero to x equals minus 6.25 at time equals 7 over 2 or 3.5. Now here my particle changes direction 
and starts going towards the origin again, but not for very long. At four seconds, the particle is only at minus six. I also found the velocity at t equals four by subbing it in, and we know acceleration is still two. So here is a summary of what your particle is doing over the course of the first four seconds. What is the total distance traveled by the particle in the first four seconds? Well, we have to add up each section of its journey, remembering to take that absolute value when required. So I know from six, okay, to zero, well that's six. I know from zero to minus 6.25, that's really just 6.25 centimeters. Then I'm going to add on 0 0.25 for that last little bit. So in total, we will have traveled 12.5 centimeters. For part F, what is the average speed, velocity, and acceleration for the first four seconds? So average speed is distance over time. We know the particle traveled for four seconds, and during that four seconds, its distance was 12.5 centimeters is equal to 25 over eight meters per second. So remember that speed should always be positive. This is different from average velocity. For average velocity, we look at displacement over time. So position at time two minus position at time one over the total time taken. Looking at the position after four seconds minus the position after zero seconds. My total time again is four seconds. We know that after four seconds, the position was minus six. And after zero seconds, the position was six. It will become minus 12 over four or minus three centimeters per second. Notice that this is okay because velocity can be negative. Finally, what is the average acceleration? So this is usually velocity over time. Velocity at time four minus velocity at time zero, all over the total time four seconds. Now something interesting and something logical should happen here. Velocity after four seconds was one. Velocity after zero seconds was minus seven. When I subtract these numbers and divide by four, I get that the average acceleration was two centimeters per second square. And this makes sense because we know our acceleration was always constant. So overall, in an age of acceleration, nothing can be more exhilarating than going slow. So remember to always eat from life, enjoy the sunshine, and enjoy exercise 22A.